Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, you no more deal. Walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. Threads, you name it. Just type in Boss Talk Podcast anywhere, streaming platforms, and we will pop up, guarantee you. But if you want to see our visuals, you go to our YouTube channel. That's where you're going to see all our visuals. And go ahead and sign up for our membership package because you get exclusive content there, okay? You can't say I didn't tell you. Under any video we post, there will be a link that tells you exactly how to join our membership. Just click on the link. It takes you straight to our membership packages. Thank you for your support. Man, hey, man, this guy here today, y'all, listen, he don't need no introduction. This guy, man, I'm going to be honest with you, ever since I met him, man, I, I became, he became a friend of mine, man. I'm up here in Chicago because of him. Um, his birthday definitely was, it was a big birthday. We're going to talk about all this. Um, and I'm going to be real with you, man. We're going to just talk about a lot of different things that surround this brother, man. One of the coldest dudes I know, man, when it comes <laughs> down to being a good friend, somebody that'll talk to you and tell you, hey, man, yeah, this is cool. That ain't cool. But, and, and you need that as friends, man. Larry Hoover Jr.'s in the building on Boss Talk 101. One more again. What's going on, brother? Hey, what's going on, man? Man, a man I'm a, I ain't going to lie, man. Like I said, uh, man, I enjoy myself up here this time. Probably one of the favorite mm -hmm. times that I've came up to Chicago, man. And uh, just thank you for even just rocking out with us. You know what I'm saying? Man, I thank you for supporting, man. Man, I'm always support. That's yeah. the way it is. This is either this way or no way at all for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we got to say happy birthday again. This happy is your big birthday, 50. man. Oh, she going to put it out there. See, I tried to hold back. 50. I was like, nah, I ain't going to put it out there big like 50s. that. 50s, everybody knows. I is my 50. I, I was like, nah, these niggas don't need to know. I wanted to do you know a, a surprise birthday party for Hell him. No. He, he talking about, no, please don't. Please don't. don't. The big 5-0, you going to have all these 5 -0. But, man, I, now I got jealous when I seen you. I was like, dang, I should have did it, man. I can't double go back. That's what it is. That's the whole thing. You only get that once. That's what I said. When I said I just enjoyed it, man, and the vibe, man, everything that you've done uh, throughout. Um, the vegan restaurant was counted, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday. Hey, you know in about five years, maybe I'll go back and do a 25 party or something. Hey. <laughs> I want to go backwards from here. Man, let's get it, man. Yeah. Let's talk about it. So how does it feel, though, being 50? I mean, it's, it's just another day. It just feels good to know that I'm here for 50. I, I know, know. A lot of people that didn't make it didn't to 50, and there's a lot of people still not going to make it. So You're right. Yeah, You're right. Feeling good. Still Still growing. Still growing. Yeah. Still growing. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? I'm okay. still keep growing, keep developing, and as life goes on, so I'm dead. It's all about growing. So what people can expect to see you coming up and going forward with Larry Hoover Jr.? Well, with me, man, they can see me steadily fighting for um fighting for my father. Your father. You know what I mean? And fighting the you know, just doing new ventures in life, just trying to move forward, keep growing mm -hmm. to different things. Yeah. You know, I started out just doing my construction, but no, I can't say I just started out. Doing yeah, you've been a doing lot of things that's been going on in life, but yeah, just keep moving forward with mm -hmm. different ventures. Because to me, um, when people approach milestones, because I would think a 50 is a milestone in your life. Yeah. And then knowing that your dad isn't here to witness it, you know, he's behind bars. Right. Um, how does that, does it, did it hit a certain way? Like when you woke up that morning and you, uh, you know, 50, did you think about that? Well, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a sad situation when you look at it, but I'm so used to him not being here for That's my what milestones. I was wondering. So, you know, I, graduated I turned 21 my kids was born like mm -hmm. it's like it's it's kind of what my life is at this point mm -hmm. but you know I still look forward to having some type of milestone where he where can be he... there for the milestone will be embracing him when he come home you know yeah that'll that'll be the milestone that we can do together since the rest of them been kind of pushed to the side to be able to Mm -hmm. Actually, hug as a family, you know. Yeah, are you able to like send pictures to him to show him what's going on and so forth? Yeah, 
pictures. Okay. He get pictures. He can get pictures and mm -hmm. stuff, so he can make him feel like so, he's still involved. Yeah, so he'll get some pictures of, you know, everything. The events and stuff. And I'm kind of horrible with that. If I didn't have other people helping me, <laughs> you know, he still talks about me. I got pictures that I'm supposed to be sending them that haven't been <laughs> sent. Do he say something to you about it when you talk to him? Yeah, he. What do he say? So he got a thing. He, he just asks where they at. He waiting on them. Like, I didn't get them. And, mm -hmm. and you be like, dang, he I got to looking get these forward pictures. to seeing them. It, it's crazy the transition from when he was incarcerated and I could see him mm -hmm. into being incarcerated and I, I mean, where I could touch him and all that type of stuff to the incarcerated where I couldn't touch him or see him as regular to where it's a lot of letters because I didn't have to send letters and stuff because I just mm -hmm. was always there. there right. That, that letter thing has been, it just don't be, it's just rough to me. I never mm -hmm. was into doing a lot of writing. Writing and communicating through it. Yeah. Let me ask you something, man, because I, 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 I think, I mean, marriage is something else, man. When I looked at those pictures on your uh, tree last night. Mm -hmm. On the floral yeah, arrangements. Listen, man, you, you, you was a young, young dude when you, you know, did the marriage thing. How long have you been married? You say, you know, well, what I was like. Like twenty six. Twenty six. See, yeah, you, I wasn't you, young. you weren't young. I I did look, the maybe you just looked young on there because the time has passed, Larry. Hey, we don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, like um, relationships and just building the right family ordinance, man, is so important, man. It, it comes with a lot of respect. How, how much? How much do you value like uh, marriage and all that stuff? I mean, my family is everything. I made a commitment and. I'm willing to put all the work in to, to keep that commitment. It's not a it's not an easy thing, you know. It's what you make it. So, even through all the ups and downs and everything that comes with a relationship, you know, we hanging in, and keep pushing to move forward with it. You know, That's some big. people some people give up. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know, what I mean, some people want to be unfair or get too selfish. You know, it's a it's a partnership. It's and definitely everybody got to work at making it work. It ain't, it's not easy. Wow. But as a man in a um in a relationship in a marriage, how do you resolve problems? Just like everybody else, we 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 holler, we scream, we argue, <laughs> we get over it, we come back and address it again, and we just move forward. We you know you can't um, just can't let it link on. You got to right. got to get past stuff. Because at the end of the day, you you decided that this is the person I want to be with for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yep. We, you know, what does it go do to hold animosity and anger? That's true. You know, and it's, be, it's things about just dealing with people that you don't agree with. But if this is the person you go on be with, you got to love them for who they are, the good mm -hmm. and the bad, you know. And they're not going to be perfect, and you're not going to be perfect, so... What percentage in a, in a marriage you think has to do with compromising? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you got, you know, everybody deserves some things that, you know, that they just want and everybody got to be willing to do it for, for mm -hmm. they mate to a certain extent. You know, it's going to be some things that you want that he got to take care of and vice versa. And you got to be willing because like, hey, I love her. I love him. This is my mate. I don't agree with this, but, mm -hmm. you know, this is who I love, so I'm going to go ahead and do it for them. It's so crazy how opposites attract. Because yeah. a lot of time when I talk to couples, it's always like, you like this, she don't like this, and vice versa, but it works. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. And that's the problem. Everybody looking for exactly, you know, you're not supposed to just go for something that you can't deal with. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The stuff that you don't like in a person, can you deal with that? Right. That's what you need to know to move forward. Can you deal with what you don't like about them? Because nobody's going to be the same. And if you're looking for somebody that's exactly you. I think that's more problems if they're exactly you. Right. Yeah. And then um, looking at them and trying to deal with them, because as you grow, you have new quirks that pops up. Because when you met her have long ago, she's not the same person from then till now. Yeah, she changes. has grown. And then you just have to learn how to grow together and not grow apart. Yes. Yeah, well, my buddy told me, but it's a saying that he got from somebody else. But if you see the world as you did 10 years ago, then you 10 years behind. You know? Exactly. So everything changes. Change is the constant variable in life. 
some changes you um they happen and you had no other choice and then some changes are the ones you make. The thing is being able to make the changes that you want to make and having the discipline to do it. That's real. Do you feel like you have gotten more patient in a relationship as the older you've gotten into the relationship? No, I think I get well, I guess so. But then I get uh you know as you get older, you um I don't know, you get your little you little grumpy stuff, you know what I mean? You get old, and mm-hmm. then you acting like a little old man at times, you know? That's real. Um, when I uh, think about, you know, your um, your son mm-hmm. and, and you, I, I think of it as a win because you really, you know, with your father being incarcerated, um, for you to stay on, you know, out here, to yeah. make that step and for your son to see that you can thrive being outside of those walls versus seeing your father in the walls. I think you broke that cycle and you have to celebrate the win, you know, no matter how you may look at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. you you done something different when you could have went the other way with it. And and and, and in, te- in in turn, your son can see that yeah. and, and basically have that to, you know, go by as well. And yeah, that's the that's my story. That's what I'm pushing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, you know, you don't have to follow the whatever blueprint you feel like happened or the blueprint of going to jail or, you know, the street life and what have you. Because, you know, we know the end the outcomes of these situations, you know, trying to, I don't know, be a thug, being real, or, you know, hustling. Like, it's, it's other ways I had to live without my father. But you can make sure that your kids have a father, you know. Yeah, I I yeah. talked to one person that was like, uh, it was like when you came to the school, they had to speak. I can't even remember who it was, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. That it was like they basically were told that you were coming to this school or something. Mm. And I was like, it, was it like that? Like, do you ever remember your presence being something that affected the whole surroundings? <laughs> oh, is that somebody cloud chasing? Because I'm in Chicago. Like they had to behave once they once you came to the school. They, you know, didn't, I don't remember who said it. I wouldn't even glorify it if it was. But it's like, was it a thing where when your presence is felt that things, you know, have to be altered? Or maybe like, he didn't you know, know about not it. Not that I know of. That, I always yeah. felt like I carried myself on an even tone where I'm no. You know, it's me and you. We all, we all together. We on mm, the same. That's real. You know what I mean? And it's opportunity for everybody to be whatever they want to be. If you're willing to work at it, I know some of it comes from. Okay, that's my father in the name, but you know, I never felt like. Okay, I'm here, and this it needs to be like this because I'm here. Maybe I wanted certain things to be a certain way, but I always wanted to be. Uh, peaceful and respectful. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. but not that somebody had to. I never took like, you know, put the word out, make sure it's like this. Yeah. If they feel that way, you know, the totally name. Told that on them. Yeah, the name carries weight though. Correct, because when you think about it, you look at the the people and they watch the news and they read the tabloids and they see all of the social media. You think back then it was just tabloids. Yeah. It wasn't even it, it wasn't even it, it was the inquirer mm-hmm. or something. It would be they had a way that they put media out, media out. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I could see that being a thing. I, I really could thinking about it. Well, in the media and the tabloids always gave a lot of the wrong narrative. Yes, you know what I mean. All they could see is one side of things, and yeah, it has been you know sides of things where it could have been better. But as it grew and moved forward, none of that was on. <laughs> yeah, no, that was publicized. You know what I mean? That's real. You still got people that don't know what the real mission was and what my father believed in, and they still expressing a, uh, you know, a negative identity. Like, yeah, this is my, this is my life and my legacy. You know what I mean? My father's legacy was supposed to be more of. Like Mayor Daly, Mayor Daly was the de- was the mayor of Chicago, and they family came from the streets. He seen that he wanted to follow that blueprint, and he mm. was on the the path to following that blueprint. But that was like too much power. He was supposed to be more Malcolm X's coming from 
the streets to seeing what it is to bring his people together so we can try to get a stake in our community. But they, you know, kind of stopped his legacy from moving forward. They, mm. you know, gave him, they gave him the last case that he had, which was a drug conspiracy case. And a lot of people get a second chance after a drug conspiracy case. They mm -hmm. don't want to give him a second chance to move forward in life. We just, we constantly go keep fighting, but we were talking about the, uh, talking about the tabloids, but they, they put a wrong, they put a bad narrative. Yeah, There's people right like you to give an opportunity to yeah. put the right narrative mm -hmm. and know that he wanted people to change their lives. That was early, early on when, when this would have been referred to as well. So I just thinking about the timeline, how people view things. Time changes yeah. things. We're talking 30, we're talking 26, 27 years ago, you 20, you know what I mean? People yeah. see and say things, but at the end of the day, over all this time, uh, going from, uh, going to gr growth and development, yeah. you know, change this whole scenario changed with him while he was incarcerated as well. And he yeah. was promoting the right thing. And we know that and we're going to get into it. Um, I'm going to let her say something because no, she's probably yeah. holding her tongue right now. Yeah. No, one thing that I've always, um, wanted to say, because a lot of people who sit in that seat, right, go through different journeys. Some of them ended up, because of their environment, ended up on the streets selling drugs, doing all, you know, gangster, all of that sort of stuff. And I've always been like, why? Just because your environment, do you have to be in, involved in that? And most of them always say, well, I am a product of my environment. Um, I didn't have at home and I glorified this because of I saw the money, the, the cars, the girls, the this, the that. So that's what I wanted. It just called me. But you find a few, when I mean a few, I can count them on my one hand who actually accelerated out of that community, became a doctor, a lawyer, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I'm like, why can't we get more people doing that? Why do they have to succumb to their environment? And since you have um, a name, so do you actually can help people, like the, some of the kids, when you talk to these kids, do they actually listen and like change their route? I don't know who actually changes their route, but I put it out there and hope that somebody does. But yeah, like we do fall victim to, I think it's the mindset more than the environment. The environment is real, but if we could see things a different way and see that it's actually opportunity, like if you got years and years of, this is your understanding, this environment, the, the, the street life, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, the criminal life, and it's passed down through your community and through your people, and they put this in your mind, then you don't believe that or no, I think you hear it and you don't believe that because you don't see the positive things that you could do. You see more of this because it's right there right. in front of you and you can touch it. But I just think it's the mindset. Like if you can understand that what you could possibly do and that it just takes work to do it. Like I think people believe that there's no other way or that it takes too long. Everything takes, too takes long. time. Right. You can make this money quick, but then you go have all the time in the world once you have to go Sit, sit down behind the walls or you know you might get killed out here messing around and then it's over but you know it's just a mindset change to know that some things could be done and to have the the drive and the focus to really do it and now in today's world there's so much going on it's hard to focus on anything mm. the gds the gd okay you at a young age your dad growth and development became a thing yeah you when talking to your father early on would have been experiencing growth and development more than anything else. Yeah, that's mainly what I was that's all, I mean, That's but, all but, you could have been. You know as a kid, I did kid things at, some, at a point in time. Of course. I educated, but yeah, my whole thing has been more of, mm -hmm. I started seeing all of the, you know, the positive activity and he was pointing to me to what he wanted me to be and wanted me to do. And, you know, he had the book Growth and development Correct. he was trying to pass and people were supposed to be trying to move from an outcast of society to part of society. So, And that's just been my experience and what I was seeing and that's what I stuck with. It made more sense to me. Plus, while that was going on, like I met so many people. Like Some of this um, kind of made me who I was. I had so many associates and people that I met 
not necessarily just my friends, but I had seen so many people die by the time I was probably a sophomore in high school because I was meeting people and people was happy. Oh, that's little Larry and Blase Skippy. And now I see some more people. What happened to so and so? What happened to so and so? What happened to so and so? Like, a lot of people had died at an early age. So that's like, help you think. Maybe you don't want to do this. Maybe you don't want to do that. You know what I mean? And then my best friend, when he got killed when we were yeah, real young, that. that, you know, but I just, I seen a lot of death. I seen a lot of people going to jail. And it's not a rite of passage, man. I have man, to go through that process. God mm -hmm. kept a hedge of protection around you yeah. in order for you to still be here. I always say that. I got to say that because that's something that sticks out to me to see so many people pass on and yeah. you still be here. And you know that it could have been you. It's the, it's the known. You see the fact that God has blessed you and that he keeps his hedge of protection around you as he talk about Job and the word of God that I, I read. You know, I just feel like it's something there. You know what I'm saying? Because you could have been gone. Yeah, I could have. I could have been gone. Yeah. A lot of times, staying out all night, doing all kind of crazy stuff as a young man, God spared your life. Yeah. And that's crazy, the fact that if you don't recognize that at our age, oh, you're in trouble. Yeah. And you probably wouldn't even be here, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, because you got to at some point wake up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to. You get so did, um, okay, so your dad is still in maximum hold where you can't visit him or anything at all? Well, I can visit. I just can't. Touch, it, I mean. Yeah, it's through the glass. You can't, okay. It's on his phone through the glass. Do you think that they'll ever um, at least ease up on that where you can be able to touch him and hug him and all of that again? I think it's either some of the stuff that we're working on gets to the point where he gets out. But I don't believe they want to let him out of there. I think they really want him to die in that situation. They don't want him to see the world. Because I prayed about it so many different times because to me it's like every time when I think about it, I know you've been living this life, so certain things you're over, you mm -hmm. know, but when anybody, I'm sure other people who watching it can, you know, feel it too, it's like, I just want to cry sometimes when I think about it because I put myself, I try to put myself in that situation when I see your mom and I, I met your mom and I see how sweet she is and how upbeat her personality is and how hard I know it probably is on the inside, yeah. you know, trying to put that on all the time and have fun knowing that she really wanted to hug her husband. She wanted to be with her husband. You know what? Um, all his family, but definitely my mother. Right. You know, she's been... To go on this journey, she's chosen to take a long ride, you know, and then we're constantly fighting. So, see, it's a lot of people that they've given up, you know, saying his name and I got love for him is the right thing to do, but they really don't, um, they don't believe right. that something could possibly happen. It's, it's people that do. So I'm not going to knock everybody down, but right. it's people that have really giving up. They say that he's never coming home and and they just say his name because they like everything that comes with saying his name right. and that I love and support him. Like I run into the issues where and I try to tell people, but people reach out to me to support what they trying to do as far as gang culture and behavior and can you tell your father this and my guys over here and like my father is fighting for his life. Right. You know, you still talking about chief this and chief that and got pictures of pick pitchforks and six point stars, you know, as representing my father while he's fighting for his life. Right. You know, you are part of the reason why his opportunities are get taken thinner away. and thinner. Right. Because you still, I'm saying that he's not controlling none of what you guys are doing. Because if he was controlling what these guys in it the street was doing, done. they would be doing growth and development. They would right. be helping fight some of the injustices in that community. They'd be taking stake in their community. But they keep the narrative of what, um, you know, what the government do. But, and if they feel differently, if they feel differently than, than what the government thinks, why y'all portraying him as... Chief and six point stars and pitchforks. You can't put the pitchforks and the six point stars down and have it in your heart and your chest or do what you do, but don't do it when you um representing and talking about my father. Exactly. But the thing 
See, these guys, I got to be honest with you. To me, yeah, it's more, that has nothing to do with your father. Yeah. That's more beneficial to that person who's doing that because they're trying to set forth some type of a reputation. Yeah, I'm being real, and I'm, when I look at that, and I even think about Rick Ross and the whipping work and uh, Hallelujah and 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 saying all these things. Right. I don't think that has nothing to do with your dad. Yeah, that's more of a person trying to promote whatever they're promoting within the project of their mind or their or what they're trying to do for as for their image. That has nothing to do with Larry Hoover, who basically been locked up since 1973. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? There's no way because they don't even know him. Yeah, they never. Some of them probably haven't even read a book. Some of them probably haven't even looked up the history of it. They're just doing it because it's something that if I say this and because of what the government has portrayed this to be. Yeah. I can look a certain way. Mm -hmm. I can I can throw this out here. I can sell a certain amount of records. I can do, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and this is something that's really sad, to be honest with you. Yeah, it is. Because you really, you're doing this, and at the end of the day, this guy who has really been locked up because of the legend yeah. of who he is. Like when we talked to Ice-T, and he said, uh, Ice T is just a reg, you know, a regular dude. You, got, we was at his house. We sitting in the in the talking to him, mm -hmm. and he says, "I'm just a regular dude." Now, the legend of me, yeah, what people think of me, it mean I could probably kick such and such so many niggas' butt and all kind of stuff. But just who I am is not the legend of me. And that and that's exactly my thoughts. Uh, for one, you supported what I said with these guys that are working on themselves, and they don't really the concern about him is not real, but. That's what we fighting, the legend of Larry Hoover. We not fighting for the man. Yeah, the man. Like they not looking at who my father is, what his beliefs are, and the changes that he's made. They still holding him responsible for the legend of Larry Hoover. And that's what these people keep doing. They keep the legend of Larry Hoover going. Larry Hoover, the gangster. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely people that know about some of the positive things and they try to promote that because he was somebody that kept order. You know what I mean? He kept unity between all the different organizations and what have you. Nobody was able to just bring peace like that so people can, you know, so it would be safe for our mothers and our kids and all our women to just, you know, be in our community. Do you think, like I mentioned Rick Ross, after all that happened, I think because of the way he moves and the business mind that he has. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of times we do things with projects, but I don't I don't know. I know after that, I don't know if that was something that you guys took care of that, of course, talked about. And it was I remember seeing y'all for some reason. I thought mm -hmm. I seen y'all where y'all talked and, and that's good. But at the end of the day, to de-escalate and all the movies and all the stuff. I mean, is there anything coming out concerning your father as far as like uh, something, a documentary to speak on his life? You know what, we haven't... Because the wrong, the only reason I say that is because you don't want the wrong perception out there. Well, documentaries come out, but as far as us doing the documentary on his life, they, um, you know, my father wanted to make sure he's real particular. Yeah, yeah. And he wants to make sure that anything about his life is done the way he wants it to be done. And for his situation, it's hard for us to do it because it's hard for him to put his input in, you know, with yeah. the 15 minutes. Like, he's okay with, he is supposed to be coming, but it's just difficult because for him to really put the input into it, for him to be comfortable with it, it's hard for us to do. Other people do it because they're not concerned about that. They just want to tell the story and move forward and get whatever comes with it. But for us to like really do it and make it the way that he would be happy with it and that's important to us, you know, that's that's the kind of hold up do on you, us doing it. Do you see, I mean, like you got 50 and all these different people doing these different, you know, uh, whether it be series on, on the father and the son, um, I could I could see Larry and definitely little Larry and you do, doing something like that. You know what I'm saying? Have they ever reached to, to re out to y'all? That's what I was getting I mean, at. We've we spoken to different people. There's been stuff on the table here and there. But I'm talking fifty because fifty seemed like he's been. I mean, um, we 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 we've talked to fifty. Okay. You know we had some some things on the table. Okay. They kind of 
came to a stall for the moment or what happened. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, we we spoke because about, I just we look spoke at, with a lot of people. I look at little years. Larry, man. He yeah. he's some dope, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just love because my son, you know, I just think about these. I'm like, man. You know, because that really sets the record to where you get to control the narrative. Yeah. Uh, but you're still going to come with some flack. Every time but you, you know do what? anything, it's a reaction or something. We know that when it, when we tell the story, it's going to be good and bad. It's not going to mm-hmm. be Correct. the whole... Um, <laughs> you know, I always talk about the, the positive side of yeah. things and, you know, what I've seen. But it's more to it than what I've seen. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's people that live their life through this and... Some of them change, some of them haven't changed, so it's it's more to it. But some of it is their own choices too. Right. But mm-hmm. I know what my father's outlook is. I talk to my father. People talk about what they knew back then, thirty years ago, mm-hmm. when they was around him. Like he's not the same person that he was. I mean, the core of him is there, but you know, whatever he might have believed in or may have done the ways he may have done things. That's not all the same. I, I talk to him. I know where his head is at. Mm. I know what he's believing in more than they do, but they hold on to the image that they had, and I guess that's how it is. Yeah. yeah. Does yeah. your father ever say to you, like, because you know how a lot of time, and this happened to a lot of people, but he had that long stint that he's still in there, and that in the beginning, you know, you had a lot of people visiting you and, you know, people who cared about you, stuff like that, and all of a sudden they start dwindling off, and there's not many people as who you used to. You talking about my, did my father, your father like that or me? Yeah, your father, because well, people visiting, and then all of a sudden you don't have that many people visiting anymore, except from just direct family. Or do, does he have other visitors? Well, he can't really put many people on his list. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? It's go, it goes from, and then you have to know him for so long. And oh. Oh, like it's a lot to, to do go. background check and all that type of stuff. You know, a lot of people he knows is criminal because he came from the Right, streets. right. So. Right. I mean, he knows a lot of other people that, you know, that wasn't from that, but it's not a lot of people that get down there or that's okay. on the list. Okay. You know? Because I know we've been segregated for a while, you know, some people tend to fall off or can't withstand the long haul of, yeah. you know, keep going back and forth. That's the reason yeah, why I was like trying whole, to figure it out. It's a whole vacation, right. depending on what you got going on in life. So that's kind of how the federal system does it. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of time when people go to, Getting these situations and, it, and it's for drugs. Usually, they the breadwinners in the family. They the ones exactly. that made the money. So once they're locked up and their money runs out, how do the other people around have the money to to keep going to back go and see yeah. those people? You You're know what right. I mean? And another thing I wanted to ask about your mom because I've met some women who um, husbands or boyfriends be sent away and they can't withstand the long haul. Does your mom have? a program to talk to other women who um, maybe husbands are locked away to, to, cause she's to me is the pinnacle of a person who really held her man down for this long. And a lot of women out there can't do that. Well, a lot of them can't, I don't know that she would say, she would definitely say support, mm-hmm. depending on the behavior and the relationship. She wouldn't necessarily just tell people to a woman to put her life on to hold. go for this this haul. You know that was her choice, and it was a a noble thing to do. Right. She wouldn't tell you just to walk away, but she didn't know that it was going to turn into this long. This, you know. Right. Your your father, like when you think about it, y'all remember you talked strongly a little while about the first step. Act, you know, and you was you was talking about, you know, the fact that he should should have the action to be released, right? Mm-hmm. Um, have anything else? You have anything since me and you talked? Anything else? You know, protruded out well, far as the law is concerned, or far as the the movement of his case? I'm trying to think. Has it? If it hasn't been longer than a year, we re-entered our stuff for the First Step Act because it was without prejudice that he was refused and the judge hasn't responded yet. So we're still waiting and then we're just still working on other angles just in case yeah. that we can still keep on pushing. I wanted to go back to Ms. Jamaica with the yes. with the um, mother. with my mother situation mm-hmm. and it's um, I wouldn't say that she would tell women just to leave but she still didn't. She she just didn't know that it was gonna be this right. long, and 
I guess she would still say support and be there, but you know, be careful in the choices cause life still goes on. A lot of people gotta understand that and the men have to understand that life still goes right. on. Like how how are you behind the wall still trying to um control control and bully somebody right, right. <laughs> that's trying to take care of your children and what have you or and take care trying of you. to take care of you. Right. And you on the phone trying to make sure that go do this, go do that, don't go outside, blase skippy like I understand that you might have made money and took care of me while you was there, but life still goes on while you there. You gotta have a right approach to how you deal with a person. Plus, it's a lot of a lot of kids that don't have relationships with their um their fathers, fathers who because are, mm -hmm. they don't know how to keep a relationship with the lady. Cause it's up to the lady once you go away to make sure that your kids still see you. Exactly. And keep their relationship going. And you know, men are there, they tough guys, they macho and blase skippy. And the they mess up with their mother, so now they don't have a bond with their kids. They want to blame her, but you know you got to be have some humility. Be that's the reason why I asked that going. question because her being able to talk to some of these women to say that he is going to react this way because he 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 lost all control yeah. being behind you know bars and you know how to how to respond to this because he's going to say this eventually he this is because she's experienced all of this so just to be able to talk to that female and you know calm her down and so forth yeah, but she she says her her situation was so my father's different <laughs> you know he's not like yeah deep understanding okay, so knowing good. how to um Go back and she she says that when she sees stuff going on that my father never reacted or treated her like some of the stuff that she sees out here in the world. Mm. You know, so he knows what wouldn't make sense to do, right. you know, and expect things to go another type of way. Like, and I think I kind of got that in me, like from him. Some of the choices you make. Like you have to think about that because you got to know about the response or the aftermath of what you do. So when you get emotional and react and say things that you can't take back or, you know, put your hands on somebody and what have you, you have to think about how that's going to affect the long run. Even right. if somebody moved past certain stuff, they don't forget that stuff. I mean, I was just early on your mother, I remember her saying that uh, uh, she, when growth and development was used, the first time that they caught whim of it, that they penalized uh, Larry by not letting him get visits for a year. Okay. Well, how long ago was that? That was that, that was, had to be early on, or no? Nah, that wasn't that early. It's been since he was in the federal prison. And okay. It wasn't okay. first being used. What happened was we was trying to bring the book back out. Oh, y'all trying to bring the book we was back trying out? To bring the book back out because the, you know, the information like the youth could use it right now. The stuff Correct. that he said then. It's still great information for now. You know, I'm I'm working to try to bring that information to the world because we can't use growth and development because they want it to be considered another name for gangster disciple, which is not another name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Guys like growth and development, growth and development. Well, what are you doing? Are you living your life? Are you growing to be a better person? Are you trying to be a part of society? That's what growth and development is about. It's not a slick name for gangster disciple. Right. Because it has the same initials. It does. That's the reason why they felt that way. So if you said growth and inspiration, you think that they would still have that same issue? Um, I think I just have, I don't know what the name has to be, but the information is great. Mm -hmm. I, I can't stop saying growth and development because it's real. It is real. You know, it's just there's a lot of people tarnish it because they want it to be gangster disciple. I remember I used to try to get people to take the information. Like when I used to work at a, um, a independent living place and it was young guys there and you know, they weren't, they weren't, they were not folks, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And uh, I'm trying to give them this information cause they need it cause you hit, you heading down the wrong path. Right. You need to make better choices. So you go end up in another system cause they in the system from their parents not doing right by them. Mm -hmm. You know, they like, man, this is a GD book. It's not a GD book, you know what I mean? It's it's about getting and they your life read in order. it and they read it, but they don't care. The, the kids wouldn't read it. Those mm -hmm. kids at that place, the um, 
the government, they read the book. Like when when, right. I, when I said they had an issue with um us trying to get the book back out, they filed some grievances. Of, they did something against him, but they had to straighten that part out because when they read it, it's like you couldn't find this wasn't no uh information for keeping gangster disciple together. This right. was information for boys turning into men and men changing their life, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's it's true, it's real. We still we still need it. It's go it's part of my life journey. Right. Regardless what happens with my father, because that should be part of his legacy. His legacy should not be G D folks, gangster disciples, we the biggest, strongest gang over any other gang, it's not about that. His, his his thing was all about, you know, bringing people together. Like a lot of people don't like to vote. Mm -hmm. He uh, he believed that if you can get your people together and vote, you can create you can, change. You can create change. You can put people in place where you need them to to do what they need to do for their people. Right. You know, what I mean, a lot of people they feel like voting is just a game. Well, how you go? take a stake in what's going on in your community if you're not a part of what's going on and you they don't have feel nobody to represent you like mm -hmm. okay so you go sit on the outside and complain and have a fit but then you're not doing nothing because they feel it's crooked they feel that no matter if they vote it's not going to go their way that you know they're going to alter the voting numbers yeah. and all such of stuff yeah. yeah but at least you're showing a stance and one thing i can say you know ever since i can remember a long time ago whether it be Louis Farrakhan or whoever, they would even speak up about Larry Hoover. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think with these, I mean, all these different people doing that and they knowing that it's a positive thing that can happen, it's a positive reaction because when he come home, people are going to be, you know, trying to do the right thing. You know what I mean? And I that, think that's a lot of it. And they hold that against him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I yeah, think that's big. I think that's humongous, actually. The fact that he has influence and people love him they hold it against him see that's the thing you you can't prove it but i think it is proven but they just worried about his influence and his power i think it's more of even more than the legal stuff or the the criminal outlook and the gangster disciple is the fact that he could bring people together and mm -hmm. he's trying to bring them together to do the right thing and they knew change. That, they knew that he had a real stake in a in the city because we we could put people in place because it was so many guys and it wasn't just his guys it was other guys like he really had the power to bring people together so you consider it a threat if you can bring people together and make some change in the community and they not in control of the situation but it's just like um what i said yesterday when about bob marley because bob marley was in a place to create change as well with his music and so forth and that's the reason why they assassinated him as much as they talk about um it was cancer and all of that but yeah. then you saw where that fbi agent came out because he was on his deathbed okay and did you see that uh -uh. and he said he was the one sent by the government and he gave him a pair of shoes uh -huh. and it had like a little prick in, in his shoes, so when he put on his shoes, yeah. he, he actually said, out, oh, and he knew at that time that that man was a dead man. It was a cancer virus that oh, wow. was injected yeah. in him through that on his shoes, but not only him, imagine how many other agents are out there that yeah. assassinate but, people who were trying to bring people together. <laughs> I know it's, um, I know it's strange people around me and my family, and they've been there. People, they come, and it's, <laughs> without good intentions, mm. you know what I mean? Willing, trying to find dirt or, you know, drive us towards bad situations, you know, to ruin what we want to do as far right. as moving forward and keep going. But, you know, we, with us being the people we are, we not. Don't walk by fear. Hmm? You can't walk by fear. No, we don't walk by fear, but we, we not going to do fall into any of those traps right. anyway you know what i mean it's all about positive positive and productive energy and and engagements that we deal yeah. with and you gotta be careful because something as simple as what happened to him almost nobody could have expected that but that person was planted yeah you see what i mean and yeah I, I know the plants out here <laughs> a lot of them. man so like um, I know early on uh, something else 
that sticks out is the fact that he had state and federal charges. Did you you guys ever hear anything about the other charges being dropped? No. And he, one he, charge he, negating no, he's another? Actually, he's actually going to parole this month. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. But, you know, they do it all the time. But he's, you know, he's still on parole. I mean, he goes to the, um, not parole board. Well, it is yeah, parole, before the board, parole board, but um, it's a committee. It's a committee that he has to go see. I think it's every year. It's supposed to be every year. Really? Yeah, so. He's That's going. big. Yeah, it's not that big. You don't believe? He's been going for 50 years. Oh, and he go every time. <laughs> he stopped going at one point in time because they didn't give him a chance to prepare. Like mm. down there in Colorado, they just started coming to get him. Like it's parole today, and he's like, didn't expect I've been it. here in this cell. I, you know, my hair's over my head. Uh, I didn't wow. brush my teeth. You come get on the screen and go to the, to the hearing, you know. Wow. Make him look that like a monster, so to say. Well, at least that's how he felt about it. But Right. So he's back participating in that. But for some years, he... He's like, not participating. I, yeah, go ahead about your business. Let me ask mm-hmm. something. Is, is Jeff Force still locked up in the same vicinity? Uh, you know? I think he's... Back there, he was, he hadn't heard from him, but I think he said he's back there now. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. so he's probably. But back they there. not, you know, they no contact or whatever. They yeah. not in the um where they could really see. It's each other. They did have a time where they were, I guess, in the senior program, and they were together. But I don't think Jeff is in the program. Wow. Anymore. So you think they, they basically this is a maximum security, right? Just, yeah. So the whole place. The whole place. So they don't really get to enter. Nah, they don't get to. Like I said, in the senior program, they were able to interact, but I think Jeff was gone, and they had stopped the senior program. And anyway, he's not. He don't see him no more. If he got out, if he got out, would that that would also be a positive thing? Because he's been gone for thirty or thirty some years, right? You talking about my father? No, Jeff. 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 Ooh, Jeff has been. He was gone before your dad. I don't think I didn't think so. No, I think he was. Really? Well, no, Jeff was out and he went to he was in a federal situation before my father. Okay. My father was incarcerated already, but Jeff was in the federal, federal so he situation. He went from the streets to a federal. My father was in the state state and then he went okay. to the federal situation. And when they when they sit down and ate together, that had been like thirty they probably have been in there 30 and 40 years. Yeah, because I, I remember as a kid seeing, um, you know, some of Jeff stuff. You know what? Stop saying Jeff. Malik. Malik, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, some of his Malik. Stuff, okay. uh, him going back and forth to court or what have you and them talking about his case. I, you know what? I don't remember if he was just locked up or if he was on the streets at that time. Wow. But... Yeah, I remember some of that in the in the eighties as I was a kid. I like so to I'm, see them both of those guys. I'm free, curious. Man. So the time when they came together and sat down together, because I know that was like a mom, momentous, you know, situation when they did that. Um, was the government or were they mad at them when they actually did that? I don't know. They probably felt like they had control. You talking about when they sat down in the federal? Split? Yes, and I mean, did they, no, and them they probably was happy that they were sitting there. Behind their bars, they, you know, like I got both of them sons of bitches right here, right. so they probably right. was happy about it. It probably did, it didn't matter to them. It's not like they can really put no information together and get back to the community, you know. Mm-hmm. And they all that was show was peace for you see these two guys all exactly. together, but they're not really concerned about that. They really concerned about anybody that might have control over. The control that they had. They were that people might rebel, I think, that yeah. they got the power to put yeah. people together to rebel against the all the wrongdoing that's going on out here in the system. Right. You know? Wow. I want to shift gears for a second, man. Jay Prince, like, to me, you know, he a little older than us, you know. Um, to you, like, all the time he's been supportive, he's more like a, a brother or, or uncle. uncle. Yeah. And, and, how what when was the first time that you 
met Jay Prince. Like y'all relationship, I know y'all like that's your guy and he's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Texas, so yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm riding. You know, <laughs> when it comes to Texas, that's my guy. But um and the music, the hip hop is crazy for me and him. I gotta get with him. But like when was the first time y'all you, you you took notice you of him. Jay Prince and you know Okay, just growing up in hip hop like when we Like me. So when we started doing shows I used to pick the groups that used to um that we were gonna have on the shows. Okay. So, Ghetto Boys was one of the groups. Like, when you you was a promoter. Yeah, we used to do promotions. Big then. time promoter. <laughs> yeah, for then it was. Really, was it fun? Like, like y'all y'all had the movement going. Like, I'm bringing people to town, and and we go they gonna be here. Yeah, it was. Fun. Everybody know you for that, Larry. I was, yeah. You know, I was a uh, I was a kid, but the fact How that we was did it? shows, I was. What, 19? Oh, 19. Ooh, they bought 19. I remember when I was 19, so, yeah, like, the fact, That was a big time move. Yeah, I was in college. I would <laughs> I would pick the groups. I would come back home for the shows, what have you. So, But back then, we were doing the shows, and we did the Ghetto Boys, and after they came and seen what we had going on, because they said everybody, they wasn't really doing arena shows, not black people. Okay. You know what I mean? They had shows, but black people wasn't the ones putting on these shows. So we had... Uh, arena in the city that we used to do shows at and uh you know nothing but black people there and they like oh man so they told jay because jay didn't come at first it was chief coming okay yeah, yeah big, big chief. chief yeah so he telling him about what it was and how the love that they got and how they was protected and supported so it's like you got to meet jay and we kept having them come so in you and brought so big, big chief came and you know, after the ghetto boys yeah. Okay. We used, to, we used to do all the uh, Fifth Boy Boys. All the rap lives roster pretty much. They if, if they wanted to bring somebody or they had a new artist, it's like, okay, we go bring so that was a spot for they can come and help introduce they artists to this market coming to our show. How big was the arena? Man, it was the amphitheater. I I wanna say it held um we had to look it up, the Chicago Amphitheater. <laughs> but it had to hold 10,000 people. You know, they used to do the circus and stuff before I was born there. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been around. They, my mother never really knew about it because as they were, it was there when they was kids, you know? Wow. Y'all packed that thing out? Yeah, we packed it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, Jay, and Jay, when he finally comes up, because I really wanted to get this story, I was excited about it. I was like, man, I'm going to ask him how he really, like, when it was, how when y'all first met. And I know he... I definitely want to get into the fact that your father been on the album, but like, how was it when you link with him? Like, when you first met him? I mean, it was like you. I was a, a fan of it, so it was just strange that these people that um, I heard the names and the music, and you know, and I'm actually here with them, not just here with them, but actually hanging out with them. Like, yeah. we're sitting there eating and talking, and you know, it was a. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting situation. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, I'm here with some people I look up to, and we, you know, building the bond, so it was good. Man, I love it, man. I ain't going to lie, because I know that's, that. I mean, I, I remember Jay saying they embraced him in Chicago, and that was a part of that embracing the fact that you was, you was promoting. You was out here trying to figure it out, right? Yeah, yeah. And hip-hop was huge then for us, man. And it was, it was our own, you know, it was a family thing, like my... My father would be in jail, like, sit down and study stuff and could see the vision and from okay. people that he was talking to. So, you know, he kind of helped. He directed us towards, let's do these shows. Okay. And and, and speaking of your father, like, when, when he first linked with Jay Prince, did you know that he had linked? Or did no, you... he didn't link with, so he couldn't link with him. He was there. It's just that we... Well, I'm talking about how did he, how did they end up, I want to get into this, this him being on that 1996 and like, how did he end up being on there? Because we, so after we, after we started doing the shows and we had them a couple times and then Jay finally came, you know, and the bond started from there. He used to be able to talk on the phone because he was okay. in a federal place. So then, you know, we wound up putting him on the phone. With, he seen who we are and what we had going on. So it was interesting to him. Okay. And, wow, who was this that had these people together like this, had a behavior like this, had the people moving like this? And 
he so anyway, he wound up just talking to him on the phone. And that's how the resurrection thing and we happened. Kept, yeah, we kept going. He used to put our clothing line in the album. Okay. In the album covers. Like, we just, it was a good relationship. We bonded and we moved forward wherever we could um, assist each other at, you know? When you first heard your father on the resurrection and just heard the, I know, I, what, what did you think about it when you first heard it? I think that, um, you know, I was amazed. It's the... That was part of what his message was, and that's who he is. That's dope, and, man. You know, that's part of you know, kind of how I move forward with that type of thing in my head, and that's how that's who that's who I want him to be. That's what his legacy should be. Things of of that nature, like it was great. In 1996, he said, "You got we got to go to the polls." Yeah, you know what I mean, and 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 you know what I mean. Um, you know, almost to if you know if we don't do something, it, it's gonna it's gonna really like it's gonna come now. I would not I, I would demise pretty much. Did, you did know, it not, did it not seem like prophecy when you look at oh, man. you look at our communities and what's going yeah, on right now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's why that's why. It's so I ain't gonna lie. When I listen at him, I still listen to it. To yeah. be honest with you, it was like a prophecy. It's still touching. You know what I mean? Like it's something that being from the south. You know what I mean? And then hearing something like that. I mean, just for me, I'm t I can only speak for me because, yeah. you know, I listened to that whole album, you know, that, that album, The Resurrection was a dope album, yeah. you know what I mean? And to hear that, and, and there was just some songs on there, man, Ghetto Boys and Girls and all kind of stuff, man. Uh, it was just a bunch of stuff on there that was relatable and was jamming, you know. Yeah. I had two 18s in the trunk. I ain't going to never forget it. I was banging it out, man. Hey, I had... Uh <laughs> I had bazooka tools. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, had, I had punch I had 45s on each speaker, man. Yeah. Don't play. You remember them punch 45s? Mm -hmm. Oh, they were serious. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I had a deep drop when I come through. Right. I, had a, uh, I had a little Firebird, man. It had a little trunk in the back of the car. The tube sat down in there, so it's like the car really was made to a box almost. Yeah, I cut the trunk out, you know, yeah. of the cutlass. Like, yeah. like you, you could sit in that back seat, but that metal wasn't there. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I could only fit two 18s in the back of that thing. Yeah. And I had the two punch 45s. And I had dropped that damn car too low because every time I moved, that old just bounced. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't know nothing about I had put me some little clamps hey, on the thing. You just do what you want. Man, but you I'm don't tripping. know what you can do. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that that album is during that time, you know, like, and in, in the 90s, man, like, that, that was, those were some great times, man. So. It Man. had meaning to them, that, you know. It was, music um, was different. It was hip hop, and it had had meaning. They were saying something. It did. You know, they talked about what was going on, but it wasn't just the the downside of it. Like it was some uplifting music along with it. You know? Yeah. Even what? though they talked about what was going on in the streets and what have you, they still it was still some hope in there. It wasn't. Hopelessness. It was good music, man. Great music, actually, man. And uh, I know Jay, that's one that I know it stands out, bro. Yeah. It stands out to all of them, Willie D and all. It got to. Because yeah. it was just, he was, man, Willie D was talking some, he was into politics bad. Like, he was the one that, when I listened to it, I mean, don't get me wrong, Scarface was jamming, but Willie D was a political, like, he yeah. was, he was on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So both of them were dope. And, 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 and uh, that, that dynamic is what kind of put it together. You yeah. Know, when you got the same, Bushwick. same, it's not, it's good, but just having that dynamic of one person bring this, one person bring this, one person bring that, it, it all go together, kind of like a relationship. I got to ask you, which one, what's your favorite Ghetto Boys uh, song? My favorite Ghetto Boy song. Come on, man! This that's that's it. I'm gonna have to come back to it. Give me a second. Let me think about it. What's your favorite? Oh man, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's a, it, it, that's a that's a hard question to be honest with. You. And then the bad part about that is. I don't know the so names many. of songs, though, for real. I just listen, I listen to the That's music, up. and I don't See, really know the names. I am, too. Me, too. She's horrible with names. Yep. I, I ain't gonna lie. I, well, I, do the chorus. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I messed that up, too, man. I'll be in there, hum. You know when you don't remember the words, you'll start. <laughs> you'll make up something just to try to make sure you don't uh, mess it up. You know what I'm saying? I so, I mean, you, you know, when you think about just, um, you know, like I said, J&M coming all the way up here like that, um, music was different. The '90s was different, you know. Um, but like I said, I never forget the way your father approached that whole situation. For us, when he was talking on the phone, it was it, it put life in our people, man. Yeah, you know that. Even if, with him being locked up, they couldn't lock up the fact that he still could put life, and that did cause people to go out to the polls. I guarantee you. 
Things we do now cause people to do certain things. I, I say things. he was rocking the vote before uh, Diddy and them did. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Exactly. That was way before his time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> when you think about just um, like the, the inner city, like here, you know, um, people love uh, Larry Hoover Jr. Uh, to be honest with you, the people I've met, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You got a great name in the city, man. And and, and that's one thing, I, I just my opinion, man, the people I've talked to, man, how do you keep it going, man? Like people see you day in and day out. You know, you carry yourself in the utmost way of like just humble and basically just, and you make yourself to where, you know, you people can reach you, you know what I'm saying? You might yeah. be at the store. Like, how do you deal with just being in the city and, and just having the popular popular name of Larry Hoover Jr., you know what I'm saying? And I think you explained it in your question. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> That's real. That's yeah, real. You know, it's, you know just, just being myself, being, being humble, not um, being no better, no bigger than nobody else. You know, just just being a real person. Yeah. You know, I sometimes I feel like I'm <laughs> too available and too loving because a lot of people don't. You just run into people that don't know how to. Mm. They take it as um vulnerability. Well, being vulnerable is a is a rough thing because people don't know how to enjoy genuine people. They try to you know they want to take advantage of genuine people. Right. You know, it seems like it's a. Uh, like those people are put there by the government to try you so you can react so they can say, oh, we got you. We knew you was you had it in you mm-hmm, to do mm-hmm, this, that, mm-hmm. and the other, or to make that call or what have you. So it's 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 definitely um, people that take advantage and don't deserve for me to be open like I am and a good person, but I'm going to stay me regardless. Wow. I know? tell everybody, I said, you know what? Everybody have it in them to be anybody else. Yeah. You know, especially put to, because he, he would always say to me, man, if this ever happened, you sit down and cry. I'm like, no, I won't. Because when it's protecting your family, yeah. when it, because you always hear the term mama bear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something else kicks in. Yeah. And I, I think that's human instinct when you're dealing with people that you love. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you think about, um, when I think think about it, like last year, year year or so ago, uh, Kanye and you know like well it was a little bit more before that, but how did you like 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 how how big was that when he first put you on his on his album like that's huge because a lot of people you know never experienced nothing like that you know even I know it for the cause for your father too. Man, it was it was big. I was nervous, you know. <laughs> I bet. I, I wasn't used to being like on a platform like that, so it was um, man, it was a, a big situation in my life. Uh, you know, that was another um, monument, monumental moment for me mm. to be put on that album. It was crazy because what's the oh my goodness, I can't think his name. The guy that actually put it on the album was the same guy that did it for Mike Dean. Okay. Mike Dean was the one that put my father's stuff on there. He was with Rap-A-Lot back yeah. then. And then just so happened that I sent it in to Mike Dean and he put it together for Kanye. So that was... That's a... That's a yeah. Man, that's a huge... To be honest, he knew, he knew. He knew how to do it, for sure. Yeah, but it was... Um, yeah, it was a... It was a monumental moment. I was nervous. I didn't know what to say or what to do, but... It was a big moment in my did life. Did people come like did 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 that get certain people to recognize you and and, and people come up and say hey you was on that you were on that album? Oh, well yeah, it, it helped. <laughs> hey, it helped. It helped lay another platform. Yeah, you know, I've been. See, people think it's just all good. Oh, you Larry Hoover Jr. They don't understand. It's a lot of negativity to come yeah, with that. Yeah. Even with me living my life the way that I've been living my life, the name says something else for other people. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like people think that it's just a the world is yours and everything is at your feet because of that. You know, mm-hmm. It's um, it's not true. So that kind of helped put me on the platform, let some people hear that. No, nah, this ain't that. This is you know, this is a human, uh, a positive human, and they going through things. This is their family, their life, and all that. So it it kind of opened it up for how, you know other people to be accepting too. How did you like it when you heard it? 
Do the still different. don't like it. I don't like my voice. You don't that. like it. I mean, it. I like it. I like it, but his voice, you know, just hearing itself, just hearing myself is kind of like ah. Uh, you think he's not true? You, know, you used to say that. Some yeah, people happy like to it. hear themselves or see themselves. You know, I kind of be like. Uh, She's the same way. I, I just kind of, like I just voice. know that that's who I am. So I have to embrace it. I'd be like, I got to embrace it. I got to do it. I can't, because you got, I, I look, I look but at. your voice sound great. Yep. Uh, whatever. But I look at things different. I, I look at it as if I'm doing something that's going to help somebody. So I, just the way you speaking out, because you know, it, it puts eyesight on the fact of light on your dad and yeah. him being locked up and you speaking. And that's the part where it motivates me to do it. And, and, and I get confidence behind it because I know that I pray about it. So yeah. that's what make me feel like, okay, it's cool. Yeah, some people may do something and be like, look at this, look at this. And I may do it and they, be, they see it and they like, hey, let's look at this. And I'm like, I don't wanna look at that. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, come here, let's look, here go to, I'm like, well, how are you supposed to get better at doing what you're doing if you don't see That's exactly you right, like, that's so true. And I'd be like, ah. That's what made me watch some of my interviews because at first I would not watch my interview. I'll just do it and leave it alone. Right. But in order for me to grow, I have to, hear myself, hear what I'm saying, and learn how to tweak it next time to make it come across better. Yeah. Did you, when you did the Drink Champs with uh, Kanye, what was, your, what was your mindset going into that? Because I think about the small things, you know what I'm saying, but it's really big things because of the fact of you sitting down on this panel and you know how many people are about to start, about to watch this. <laughs> I didn't know what that was going to look like. I was, you know, I was nervous. I was kind of there. Just, it was like I was a more than a fly on the wall. Yeah. You know, I was actually a part of it, but it was still like, ah, ah, ah. Did you, you know. Did you take a drink? I don't think I took a drink. Because I always think that when I think about drink champs, I think everybody go on there and drink and get. But, you know, I had, before we went, I had told Kanye because. You know, he was doing the Sunday service. Yeah, and yeah. All that, and I'm like, I asked him, are you going to have a a, a, a stand-in drink person for you, or how you going <laughs> to deal with that part? I was surprised that he took part in the show. I really? Didn't, I didn't take a drink. Really? Yeah, I, think he, I think he took some shots on the show. I yeah. can't remember. But you got to understand, you know, uh, Jesus turned water into wine. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Hey, that you know that's that's his choice if he decided not to take a drink. But you didn't take a drink. I didn't take a drink, but we know that I I will drink a little bit. <laughs> in the age. I don't I don't um I don't have an issue with drinking. Yeah, you know, I'm being social and having a good time. I want to so we, have a drink. What did you did when you watch? Did you watch it afterwards? Because I think of that as a big show. Even even me and I was a game with you and Jay. To be honest with you, those times I was because I'm I'm locked in with you. Yeah. I'm looking at it like, okay, what are they doing to my boy, to be honest with you? Like, how they, how they handling you? I don't know Jay yet, you know what I'm saying? But you, I'm focused in like, okay, okay, how much? Because he don't, I know him. I know he ain't really rocking with these cameras like that. <laughs> so hey, I'm working on it every time. <laughs> every time it gets a little, a little bit, bit, you know, a little bit better. Yeah. And, you know, I, keep, I look at the situation like, either I'm going to do this or I'm not. You know, that don't take me all the way into being super comfortable, but I just have to keep telling myself, what you gonna do, either you go do this or you not go do it. You know, so I'm trying to, yeah. you know, do better with it as time goes on. Okay, do you ever go in your mind be like, man, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, that happens a little bit. Okay, uh, okay, so, yeah, that, that cause, but, but I'm, then I'm, you. I'm thinking now while we going, did I say anything that I nah! said? <laughs> no, you didn't. That ain't what we do. Like you, I think. I think it's and, and the good thing about it is the more you do it, the more comfortable you become with it. You know what to say, but sometimes you say stuff and certain people can take it and turn it and twist it. Yeah, there's all type of things people can do not to create the this this image or this this thing. So certain things that I will put out, I look at this thing for. I, that's why I never yeah. do certain things other people do, yeah, like just live. I, yeah. I don't do none of that. I yeah. have to go through it to make sure that there's nothing there. And I pray about it and before I even put it out, to be honest with you. And I try to um, think before I speak. <laughs> it's hard though, cause you get caught in the moment. Yeah, but I try to, but that's, that's a part of who I am as a person. Like even when I was talking about relationships, you don't want to say things that you can't take back. Yeah, because you go home tonight, if you know it's something mean? about the wife, you you might get checked. I, 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 think, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I think a lot of these young guys, 
Like they really start wars. Yeah. You know what I mean with the stuff they say, say. They get in the and they in the moment and say some stuff. Emotions. Yeah, but nah. When you think about like uh you and 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 the Kanye thing going back to that and the fact of how Drake, you know, with Drake having a relationship with 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 Jay Prince yeah. and them coming together for that moment, it was a big thing at the time where they was trying to, you know, come together for in and you know for the freedom of Larry Hoover. Like, right. how big was that for you? Like to see those two guys and oh. they so starred up, you know? Oh man, you, I mean, you can't really, uh, I don't even know how to, uh, how to uh, describe that. It was just, it was just big. Like the fact that these guys came together to do that and knowing that they go back and forth with, Seeing eye to eye and the stuff they had been going through, yeah, we was hoping, and it was serious. And we were hoping that um, it would lay a platform for other guys out here in the industry. You know, like y'all can get over that, y'all can move forward. It don't. We don't need to be putting on a live drama for the world to see with real people. Like, you know, y'all artists, y'all both men. Let's move past that and let's hope that some of the other um. Young men out here could move past it because you know people when they camps really get hurt when this stuff is going, going on. on. We got a lot. We done lost a lot of people. Like I thought, y'all got in the music industry, <laughs> yeah, to change your life, yeah. Not getting the industry to have the money to live the life that you was trying to get away from. Yeah, when I look at like I said when when I seen you and like I said Wallow and Gilly doing that interview with Jay. And I know Wallow been locked up. I've been through some stuff myself, yeah. you know, to, to see how he was going to question about your father because of him being locked up. Yeah. I'm watching all this kind of stuff, to be yeah. honest with you, because we know that when you sit down, that's why earlier the questions I was asking you about when a person's locked up and they go through these phases, they change, man. Yeah. And they're not even talking to people. They have a lot more time to think. It's just yeah. a different world that you live in when you put in that situation. Mm -hmm. And it'll make you change, you know, for me to, ever since when I bumped my head, never to drink again, never to smoke again. 20, what, 20, mm -hmm. 20, almost 30 years, I had had a drink or a smoke again in life. And, and I see, I say that when you go through those phases, it does something to you to where you change. So I know that your father, a great change happened. Yeah. Whether no matter who he was when he got locked up versus for the them first few years, five years, three years is a long time when you first start out to be honest with you. Yeah. And for him to be there for fifty years. Yeah. Now you know this is a totally different person. Well he he he, he definitely made changes from when he went. He was a he was a baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now he's seventy three. You know, he, he used to smoke weed party do whatever they did because the jail was a lot different back then yeah, yeah but he stopped that and he had all his guys stop that wow you know what i mean uh i've seen a lot of people come home and made the change from for the better some people come home and do the same thing but i see a lot of people that come home and it was positive for them to go through that but i'd be wishing we didn't have to go through that before we could be the people that we need to be. Like our community, it should not be just something that you do or this is what happens in your life. Like we go to jail. Like no, we could be better people without going to jail. You oh, know you're I mean? you're a living witness of that. But when you, some people came home that did anybody early on or anybody during the time come home and say, hey, I was locked up with your father. Cause that had to happen. Oh man, I, I meet so many. So You see what I'm saying? That he helped change their I life. About that oh too. man, it's, yeah, plenty of people. You know, and it's crazy because I get jealous of people. That's real. Because they had that time with they, him. They have lived with my father. They have spoke with my father. They have woken up and went to the yard and all that. Like, they have had some time with my father that I've never had. But I also know that I never wanted to have it the way they had Wait, That's real. <laughs> but, <laughs> you knew that. But, yeah, it's like, wow, you actually live with and know my father and spend time with him, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's something that I, I I could imagine only imagine you know you meeting these people because people come home and be like yeah man, I was with him man uh we kicked it you know what I'm saying and he told me some things that changed my life man and that's why I do things different now yeah. you know because of the way that he's changed yeah, you know it's a it's a lot of them a lot of them, them stories out with, there uh, that he's positively positively in 
impacted and you know they working doing stuff in the community to try to assist other people to change their lives some people have went on to do their businesses and they got that that drive like yeah that's a lot of people that's hard man um like um and i always ask this question so i gotta ask you the question uh like if you were not able to do anything to you know what i'm about to ask him right mm-hmm. if you were not able to do anything like you couldn't you couldn't talk about it. You couldn't write about it. But somebody was about to write about your life and who you are as a person. What would you want them to say? If I couldn't do it, but I... They could, but they had to do it. It's the thing, the legacy you leave behind or you're in a situation where you can't control what's going on about who you are as a person. What would I want them to say? What would you want them to say? Man, I, I, I think I would want them to say that I was... Um, So you still would be saying what I would say that you know that I was uh selfless that I That's hard. you know that I just um loved the people around me and did what I could to that I was selfless I was I wasn't about myself I worked it was about others that's just how that's just how I see it I I wonder about trying to <laughs> worry about me but it seemed like it's always been about trying to make sure everybody else was good or I could help somebody else, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've been fighting for my father my whole life. I love my community. I love my kids. So it's all, I love my mother, my family. It's always been about... Family. Yeah, family and others. I don't really think about myself. If I have to go sacrifice and do what I need to do to take care of my family, you know... That's what it's about. Bun That's B. why your wife does so much for you because she knows that. Yeah. Yeah. Bun B, um, when I talk with him, he said that when he passes away or if he's moved on, yeah, uh, many people are going to come out with different things about UGK and about Pimp C and about his legacy, stuff that they wouldn't dare come out with now. Right. With Karen, uh, I think Chapman, yeah. having the video footage of your father yeah, and the stuff. I don't know if y'all ever was able to get it or either deal with her on it, but do you think about sometime how people can spin the narrative on your father or, or, or on your legacy of who you guys are as a family and with the information that's out there? Um, that stuff that she has, I don't think that it was, it would just show who he is. Okay. Like I know it's not that it's some negative information. It's positive information. It just wasn't her information. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? She didn't, she just didn't own it. It was supposed to be for us and she had control of it and she kept it and claimed it as hers, you know? So it wouldn't be a negative thing. It would be positive information, but we deserve to, to have it. You know, we deserve to have it. That's, yeah. That's and, all. And and and, and the reason I that, go ahead. But yeah, they couldn't spend. You go have people that just want to tell the story. They people are more interested in the criminal element of things. Yeah. You know, they want to talk about the gang because so many people have got popularity out here from the Bloods, the Crips, and but my father, he sees the negative side of things and pushing that as buffoonery. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He don't believe in trying to, if you was doing something illegal, you proud of it and you want to show the world that this is it. You got young people looking at you showing that this illegal activity was what got you to this and that and to boast about it and make them think it's a way of life. Look at what it's doing to our community. So he you know, he don't believe, he, he believe it's part of his path, the stuff that he did or what they've been through, but it's not really a good look to just push that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I, I definitely know. And just like earlier when I asked you about your mom helping other females who are going through that same situation, in your case, you are a son who have grown up without a father. Right. Um, your father's trying to 
um, be a father from behind bars to you. And I know there are a lot of young boys, young men who grew up in that same situation. Hey, Do this, you? That's why this is empty on this shirt. Right. You know, I keep trying to tell people that and they, some people believe that it's like, it's just my father. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? It's a lot of, it's a lot of, yeah. Yes. Yeah, a lot of fathers that's not here. Some of them, some of them deserve to be where they are. It's a lot of them that don't deserve to be where they are. So this is, you know, it's a movement, and it's not a movement just about my father. I think I missed part of the question on what we were getting to. How do you out. help? How do you help, or and have you helped some of these young boys deal with that? You know what I'm. I speak when I can, and I'm still working at trying to get in these spaces where I could just, you know, we can have a conversation. We could talk about the the way they see the world and right. how they can move forward and just trying to have Channel a better that mindset. Anger. Yeah, have a better mindset. Yeah, because I know that they're angry, especially with if their father was wrongfully convicted or taken away or maybe even if they were well, right. They say victim to they, they say a victim to their society right. or the mindset. But they, but they still need to have, know that because of your father's situation, you don't have to try to try to do that or be that. Right. Like whatever he was at the moment is not who you have to be now. Right. You know. Wow. Um, I'm, I go back to Karen Chapman for a second. For I'm for the end this. Like, um, I think about the video footage, but I do know that. I mean, there can be other things as far as uh, like things that you can utilize to put forth the effort, you know, in, in, in creating the right narrative, you know, for your father, even though that would do it as well, there's all type of technology out here now. Um, but when she seen him, he wasn't in a maximum security. He was in, it was before that, right? Yeah. He, yeah, that was before they sent him away. Correct. No, no, you know, I, that was before they sent him away. I don't remember if he was still at the state place or the federal thing had started, but it wasn't as tight as it is down there. Down there where you at, yeah, at ADX. Yeah. Okay, and and the reason I say that because it's just I, I was trying to figure out another way to get in there and get some footage and you know some positive stuff. I man, wish we could you, see you him gotta, again. You gotta man. think about it. This, this that was years ago, and they could choose to do it because I think um, I think Gotti did that. Yeah. But you know they don't see us the same. Gotti was yeah. a mob boss, an Italian wow. guy. My father just the nigga down there Ain't that, that was causing problems. You know, that's crazy, man. That um, don't fit the criteria to be there. That's real. You know, like usually the troublemakers inside the system that may attack guards and that they can't they can't hold or control. They send down there. They send him. Because people listen to him. They feel like if he was in another place that he might run their jail or what have you. Wow. You know, just because he, because people love him. People, he's a he's a leader. Yeah. And it's, it's innate. Like, they want to take it away from him. They want to break him. But, you know, it's innate. He's not trying to uh, destroy the community or take over the government. He would like something different for his people. But, you know, he's a... It would be good to have them. It would be good to have Malik in their older ages, even in their younger ages, but some people that would, like the way we living out here in Chicago, and it's not just Chicago, it's all across the country. Like, it's, it's not a good look for us. You yeah, know what I mean? Not people, you for man. killing each other yeah. over nothing, like over just anger. Like, it's not even worth it, you know? And, it, and I, I say that, I was talking to somebody here in the inner city, like, it's everywhere. When you yeah. look at the rappers, all the hip hop, the the, the, the people, our, our black people, man, our people that look like us, for some reason, I mean, it's tough, man. You know what I mean? You and see, they, yeah, they like this is what it is, and no, it don't have to. It be don't that. have to why, be. Why is why it's got to be that we hate each other? That's real. You know, that's why I changed, bro. To be honest with you, I I knew I didn't want to be. Um, I ain't want to be like that the rest of my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Leading people around, hustling, trying to figure out ways to, you know, manipulate people into doing whatever in different cities. That ain't where I wanted to stay. 
you know, as a young man, I figured that out. It was like, oh, I, it didn't take a lot for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, well, I see what the, your head on. The, yeah, yeah, you got to you got to you got to head on the swivel from the other people that's out here in the streets, from yeah. the police, from like we got enough to worry about. Why we yeah. can't uh, try to <laughs> raise our families and to come up to work together to make this be different for us. We like just fall prey to the plan that's been set for us from years ago. Like the, they always talk about the government and the powers to be and what have you. Like they don't have to do nothing at this point. It's already, it's in our heads and we had this, uh, these ideologies and we pass it down and we just fall right into place. I got to ask you this before I get you off here. One, this is the last question, man. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised my wife ain't asked you. This is her question. Uh -uh. Um, mental illness. Do you ever sit down with a with, with a counselor? And <laughs> Go ahead. Man. This is what she you ask, and I was like, she ain't never really. Have you asked Larry that? Like, do you agree with with sitting down with count? I don't do it. Okay, I counsel for for, for like for, for like going through the stuff that you face on a daily, telling somebody about you. I, I it's not a thing that I don't knock nobody for doing it either, but it's just some I. They talk about on my show a lot. You know what I'm saying? So you know what? I have not done that. I have thought about it. You know what the thing is? I believe it's good about that. See, like when you talk to a friend or somebody mm -hmm. and you tell them certain information, I think the thing is that um, them holding on to your information is probably why the counselor makes it good. <laughs> There you go. Because once you tell a, uh, you know, once you tell, if you talk to your friend or don't talk to anybody, you holding it in. If you talk to a friend, like, what if you and that friend fall out and this, you know what I mean, your personal information, your feelings, or you tell somebody something and they feel a certain way about how you feel. They, you know, that might be, like, retarded to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, it might be funny to them or... I think just the counselor thing may be okay. I've never done it because... I've never done it either, Larry, and they talk about it on the show often. That's why I had to ask yeah, you because I'm didn't. i not by myself now, yeah, people see? People need somebody yeah, to Yeah, I ain't never just sit to. down in no room and tell nobody, let me just drop this load on you. Now, I have met people at the store that I knew I wasn't going to see no more yeah. and just dump right there. Yeah, that was a counselor, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was yeah, like, and that was. me trying it out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like, let me try this right quick. I'm going to dump this right quick. And I told a woman everything, and I hope like hell I never see her again. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you counselors, counselors are legally binding and they're not supposed to tell unless you're trying to hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. That's the only time they, you know, can yeah. say anything. But yeah. otherwise from that, they're legally binding and you can't. You just think you talk, you tell your brother this, that, and the third, me and my wife having these issues, blah, blah, skip you. I don't like that she do this and da, 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 da. And then he don't like her because of that. Yeah, or he go tell somebody this chump. You know what I mean? No, oh, he get mad at her. Man, yeah, all she, of it. Yeah, yeah, all of it is just yeah. the way. So, but if you tell a counselor, she ain't gonna tell nobody. I don't know about. But that. you know what I like about? Oh, he ain't gonna well, tell you, nobody. You can um, you can you can sue him for that. Like yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. you can sue him if it comes out. But the other thing that I like about a counselor, which I've never seen a counselor before, but or if you have a a, a friend that you can confide in that not gonna tell your business yeah. or something like that, is that people with open mind that can give you another perspective because sometimes yep. we tend to think one track mind especially yep. when we're dealing with people that we love mm -hmm. so if you have somebody there and usually counselors are very um, trained and equipped to tell you okay so think about it in this way or why are you feeling this way is it because of something you saw your mom did or your relationship with your mom and your dad yep. or blah 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 things that you never would have thought about before it makes you be like huh okay yeah, they, so, don't, they don't tell you like what, what to, do. to do? See, people think that if you go to a counselor, no. like they got all the answers. No, they just they help don't. you think through and talk yeah. through your situation. Right. And, and like you a, said, look at it. In it's a shrink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. It ain't no you got a counselor. Hey, but it's a, a shrink. But the shrink don't have the answers. The shrink help you just walk you through it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And give you exercises because. You have to continually do some retrain your mind, retrain yeah. your thinking to be able to overcome certain things. To, to wow. move a different way. Well, hey man, thank you so much for coming on the show. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Man, uh, it's 
Mainly through Instagram. Instagram. Larry Hoover Jr. Larry Jr. Underscore on Instagram. I have um, what's my uh, free my father. You know, I had a I had a um free my father dot com. I had these these shirts where people can do that. It's just a movement. It, it speaks to to prison reform. It speaks to you know, young people out here in the world that's going through this type of thing, even older people, you know. Yeah. You should sell uh, those like crazy. Yeah, it, believe they do not sell like crazy, but. <laughs> <laughs> they should cause it's like, free my father, free my mother, my brother, my, this anything. Everybody need to come. Where can, can they get these shirts? Yeah, freemyfather.com. All right, we're going to sell out. That's, now it's up. Are they come in all different colors and sizes well, and everything? Well, they come in black, but if, you know, people like the white and they want to... Um, so this is the first time you're white. putting the white out there? I think it's been seen, but I never... I haven't sold the white. This okay, time, okay, you okay. Know, you know how y'all had a... a boss talk. Boss talk to and I'd be saying, dang, I didn't get that. Ah! <laughs> you know, that that's kind of how that is. Man, thank you for uh, coming on the show, man. Uh, happy birthday again, man. You uh, made yes, it. Thank you, I mean, I, you're yeah. a little younger than me, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't... don't old, respect, man. respect that. But one thing we didn't talk about, though, because right. I remember... Um, your wife told me about um your new diet venture. Oh, okay, what's going on? You know, I'm 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 health I try venture. to do my best to deal with um right health and wellness. So I'm exactly. trying to um a new products in Zeno. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm being my own guinea pig. You know, okay. what I mean, it's omega threes. Like mm. you're supposed to have a certain balance with omega threes, and I'm I'm trying out a product and. You know, I've seen a, so far I've seen a good response. You from like a, it. I like it. I got a good response from a friend of mine's mother that took it, and she was, like, in hospice, and she's doing better. But I have to be my own guinea pig before I really push it, push it. But, yeah, I'm trying to deal what with it. What does Omega-3 does for the body that makes it so good? So it, it, helps, your, it helps your brain. It's just the, you're supposed to have some fatty acids. Mm -hmm. And with our diet, like, we may not... I don't much. even eat fish at all, but right. and there's other sources to get it from, but we don't eat the we don't eat the right things. Mm -hmm. Everything is processed. All the stuff that we supposed to have through natural foods, our diet is pretty much without it. So sometimes you have to supplement to um right to get, you know, get the things that you that you're missing. You know, we going to eat some uh Tater chips and Snickers bars <laughs> and you know. Yeah. So with this tablet, because I know that whenever I take omega three, sometimes whenever I burp, you can almost taste the oil and all of that. Do you have that with this, or you don't taste it? I mean, I don't think it's no way around. You still taste yeah, it's it no, a little it's, bit. It's no, way, it's no way around that part. It's flavor, oh, okay. but you know, it's different flavors. But yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think you can get around that. Well, okay, Larry, it's about over. Yeah. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.